Thank you, Karen. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you very much. Well, well, Karen couldn't have said that better than my mum. That was a very nice intro. <laughs> um, I appreciate that very much. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here on a really sunny day where you could be doing something else. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll try and speak to you for five, ten minutes about my experience and, and what I've learnt along the way. Um, but I guess this session really is about you. It's about you getting something from it. So um, I'd love to answer any questions you have or have a discussion. Um, so please, you know, have your questions ready for after I've said a few words. Um, so I'll start from the beginning of this experience for me, really. I, um, I got my job on Countdown um, when I was 22. Um, and I realized very quickly, you know, I had a platform, I was invited to open an envelope. Um, and um, until 2018, I had used that platform to promote girls studying maths and science, um, to promote animal charities. Um, and, you know, really, I, what I, was, you know, hoped to be wholesome stuff. Um, and in 2018, in March, when there was the Enough is Enough protest outside Parliament, where loads of Jews gathered together, um, to protest anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. That's the first time I knew anything about um, the anti-Semitism problem in Labour that, that was happening. Um, because I'm Jewish, my mum's Jewish, um, you know, we'll light the Hanukkah candles every year, um, go to Shul once a year on Yom Kippur, not very religious, not particularly part of the community, so I wasn't reading Jewish newspapers, um, I wasn't hearing about it, um, I, I wasn't following people on Twitter that would inform me. So the first time I, I heard about the problem was on the BBC News because of this demo. And I, at first I thought, you know, people are hypersensitive. Are people just being hypersensitive to words or, you know, are they taking something too seriously where they shouldn't? Um, because, you know, I, I'm Jewish, because I care, I, I looked into it and I was shocked and astounded at the level of anti-Semitism that was going on, um, where people were, you know, where it, it, why hadn't it reached me? Um, I cared, I'd, I'd be interested there. I, and then I saw, you know, examples of Labour councillors being put up, um, but they made candidates when they were Holocaust deniers or education officers threatening, you know, posting on social media about slitting Zionist throats. And I realised, you know, this isn't just a small issue. Um, but as Karen mentioned, I had to educate myself because just being Jewish doesn't mean you know anything about anti-Semitism and when you delve into this world it's, it's things about Rothschilds, it's about children's blood, it's about you know lizards, it's about all kinds of stuff that had no relation on my life, no relationship with my family, with, with any of this, um, you have to learn it. So um, I yeah did, did, lots, did lots of research, I, I met the Jewish groups um, everyone that invited me to meet them really, just to listen to them. Um, I met uh, Gideon from Campaign Against Antisemitism, the Board of Deputies, the JLC. Um, I read books, I went to a talk by Dave Rich, who um, is Head of Policy at CST, the fantastic um, security charity, um, who's written a book on left-wing antisemitism, who helped explain it. And in September 2018, I did my first post when I saw something that was antisemitic and, and posted about it on social media and received a huge torrent of abuse. Um, and that was when I kind of had my eyes opened to the scale of the problem. Um, I didn't have to seek out anti-Semites. They all came and found me and told me how I was, um, you know, evil, um, but there's no antisemitism problem. Um, so yeah, read books, went to, I decided to, to visit Auschwitz, um, and then on posting about Auschwitz, um, uh, wonderful Joe Collins, um, an ambassador, he contacted me, um, a HET ambassador, he contacted me and asked if I wanted to do anything with HET at all, and I just said yes. Um, so I'm really grateful to him for, for reaching out. Um, that was my first interaction with HET, um, Although I definitely, I know that the reason that I decided to speak out and the reason that anti-Semitism means so much to me and why I, I see it as such a problem is through my education when I was younger, learning about the Holocaust. Um, my grandparents, my, my Berber died before I was born, but my Zayda, my Jewish grandfather, um, was a, alive at the time of the Holocaust. And, you know, the only reason that my family are here are that they're lucky enough to have been born and brought up in England. Um, so it's something that's, you know, had an impact on me forever um, and learning, you know, what happens when good people say nothing or what, it, what happens when, you know, there are bystanders watching what's going on meant that I couldn't be a bystander. Um, and, and once I spoke out and had that abuse, uh, most, but most mainly once I spoke out um, and I attended a few events and I met a few Jewish people who had 
um, lost, you know, quit their jobs because they gave it up to fight anti-Semitism, or they quit their studies because they gave it up to fight anti-Semitism, um, or people within the Labour Party who've been fighting this for a long time. The, the gratitude that I got for like one or two social media posts was just ridiculous in my point, in my understanding. I, I just didn't know why people were so grateful. Um, but the look in their eyes was something that convinced me how big the problem was. Um, so it's just been a, a you know a, a lot of small things together that, that led me in this direction um, and I, I guess um, the first event I did with with Karen and the Holocaust Education Trust was the January before last in Parliament and I gave a speech um, about what my experiences were, the levels of abuse I'd had, the attempts to, to boycott me, have me fired, um, all sorts of things and um, and afterwards, um, Lily Eber, I remember the Holocaust survivor, I think she was about 89 at the time, and she'd maybe done three events up and down the country in the last couple of days. And she said, oh my God, I can't believe what's happening. What can I do to help? And I was just, I mean, taken aback that a Holocaust survivor that's going around reliving the most traumatic experiences of their life um, was asking me how she could help with this battle. And all the HET ambassadors who were around just gathered around and said, you know, you're doing enough. Don't worry, We're, we've got this. And I think that's the message, you know, that's why you're here. Holocaust survivors, they've, they've been through enough and they are, as we know, getting older. Um, and they have decided to, you know, spend some of their time educating the rest of us so that this hopefully can't happen again, so that hate doesn't go unchecked. Um, and it's now our responsibility to take up that mantle and, 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 and share it forward. So I'm, I'm incredibly grateful that all of you are taken up, you know, have, have done this out of choice. They give, you give up your time and you enter the world of a lot of hate and it can be very difficult. Um, I'm not sure how long I've spoken to it for already. Probably way too long. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, I guess the things I, I've um, learned, especially through working with CCDH, so they gave me an outlet of, to do something positive, to actually make change because when I got involved with projects before, I didn't want to just shout. I didn't want to just scream and moan about things that are wrong. I wanted to have a way to change things. Um, and CCDH, the Centre for Counter Digital Hate, have given me a, a way to do that. Um, they promoted um, Stop, Don't Feed the Trolls. So they've informed me that, that trolls, um, political trolls or, you know, high profile abusers, so people like possibly David Icke or Katie Hopkins, um, they target profile, high profile people and they, they use controversy to spread their message. Because um, uh, when someone like one of those would, would message me with something outrageous, something racist, if I were to retweet it, you would hope 95% of people would think it was terrible and awful and condemn them. But they're after that 5% possibly uh, of people to share their message to. Um, so I guess the biggest lesson I've learned is to be, you have to be really smart with how you use social media um, and my um, kind, kind of campaign call was be louder and that's be louder against anti-semitism because the trolls are really loud um, and when I said be louder I don't just mean shout louder you know give abuse back to anti-semites it's important that we have to be strategic and the be louder is about drowning out the messages of anti-semitism with messages of truth um, with positivity um, and you know as, as Karen mentioned I think we've all been affected by what we've seen in America at the moment um, and you know we're all allies against racism and I think you know when it's when it's anti-semitism it's important to share Jewish voices and listen to their experiences when it's um, anti-Muslim hatred it's important to listen to Muslims and you know Black Lives Matter it's important to 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 highlight black voices and give them a platform and lend that to them so I think um, that's probably enough of me rattling on for now. Um, but as you might be able to tell, I can probably talk about this for years and years and years because it's been a bit of a, it has been a traumatic experience and it has taught me a lot. Um, so I'll just probably pass it back to you guys to see if there's anything that I can actually say that's a little bit more useful.